You are now tuning in to the Mind Body Podcast, where fitness experts and life coaches share their secrets on taking your mind and your body to the absolute best. This is the advice you wish you heard years ago. Get ready and take notes as we expose the raw truth behind achieving amazing natural physique and strength and ultimately become a stronger version of yourself. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the Mind Body Podcast. I'm your host Lido Dayan and in this episode I had a chance to speak with a man who considered to be a network marketing legend. His name is Anthony Powell. Anthony created tons of millionaires and led thousands of people to a life full of freedom. What also amazing is that one of his mentors was one of the best life coaches of all time, Jim Rohn. Anthony and I discussed about several topics such as how to get out of your poor mindset, what makes people successful and how can you market yourself in a world that's full of competition. So without further ado, let's begin the interview. First of all, I want to, to welcome you. I, I would like you to uh, introduce yourself, uh, let the, our, my audience know who you are, your background. So please, if you can share with us. Of course, well, my name is Anthony Powell. Um, I've been doing uh, online marketing and direct sales for you know, several years. I got started at the age of 19 years old. Um, it was kind of by accident. Uh, I was interning for a large pharmaceutical company and uh, there was a gentleman that lost his job. He was a vice president. And when I saw that, I just knew that if it was up to me, I had to have my own business and I had to make sure I had financial freedom. And You know, a couple of things I learned along the way. Um, one, you gotta have you know, your health in order, in order to be successful in business. And so that was one of the main things that we've always, I always teach people that your real wealth comes from your body. And then from there, everything else happens. Um, my story progresses that by the time I was 26 years old, um, I was a DECA millionaire, and uh, which means I had over $10 million in the bank. And it was a big achievement for me because you know, where I come from, I started this, but my business is $150 and, and pretty much no credit. And so within about a six year time period, following some legends in my industry, I was able to go out there and totally, you know, change my life. So now what I do is I teach other people how to change their life as well too, with their, you know, like what you're doing with their body and also with their mind, mm -hmm. in order for them to go out there and be instrumental in their businesses. You said, and it starts with the body. When you say the body, what exactly do you mean? Like uh, taking care of your health, uh, eating better? Well, there's two things. One, your body has, you know, is your, bo your body in general, making sure that, you know, you're at your optimum weight because it allows your, your organs and your joints and everything to not have to overwork. That reduces stress. And when you have reduced stress, then you don't have the pressure of life on you quite as much. The most important thing is your mind, because your mind is the uh, strongest, really uh, determining factor muscle in your body that it gives you, you know, everything as an outcome in, you know, what you do as far as your reality in life. So, you know, it's real important that, you know, people get their mind right. I call it mind, body, soul. And the... Uh... How did you uh, shift your mindset? Because I think we all, uh, in one point in our life, will be in a mindset of a victim. So something has got to happen in order to shift that mindset from a victim to a victor and actually take charge of our life and our dreams. So if we look at uh, money, what made you the shift and uh, really like know that you're going to make what you want to make, either it's a million dollars, 10 million dollars, how did you shift it? Well, you have to have a burning desire, it's, and it's called your why. So everyone has a why, some people have never maybe sat down and thought about it. For me, I was raised by a single woman and I watched her, my mom struggle. And so I knew that I didn't want to go through that same struggle when I chose to have a family. So you have to have some sort of a 
strong reason why in order for you to change. The second thing that happened to me was, um, I was, in, I was I've been an athlete my whole life. So from the time I was in kindergarten all the way through university, you know, doing morning, noon, and night fundamentals and follow through and discipline allowed me to apply that same thing in business. Now, to answer your question, I had two great mentors and they said to me, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. If you just follow, we will lead you to where you need to go. And so that's what I did. It was a lot of hard work. I think people, <clears throat> and it's just like what you go through when you train people. People don't realize that success is easy if you commit, if you're disciplined, and if you create consistency. Consistency means you're not going to get to your destination overnight. You have to do little bitty uh, small steps in order to get there. And um, so the last thing I'll share with you on that is um, there's, a, there's a saying that I heard from Jim Rohn a, a long time ago. He said, for things to change, you mm -hmm. need to change. And for things to get better, you need to get better. And uh, that made a lot of sense to me. And yeah, that made a lot of sense to me too. When I first uh, heard that it's like literally, it, it, it's true, it's as simple as that. Like if I want things to change, I gotta change. And if I wanna make stuff better in my life, then I need to educate myself, feed my mind every single day and become better because the, the value I am for the marketplace is like, the more I educate and feed my mind, then eventually it, uh, I, I receive it back, right? And most of the people, I think, in the world uh, think about I need to uh, get in order to, to give. Like, you need to give me first and then I give you. But it's not the way it is in life, right? We always need to first see how we can give and then I believe it's automatically somebody else wants to give you back, right? Yeah, it's kind of like you got to make deposits in other people in order for you to make withdrawals. So you said mentors, uh, like Jim Rohn, uh, you said was one of your mentors. So how do you actually find the right, right mentor that wants to help you? What, what specific, uh, let's, let's say if I take you back, what do you believe you did differently that made uh, those mentors want to help you? So, first off, you gotta, you got to find your passion that you, you have in yourself, meaning whatever type of passion that can, you can apply to a business. For example, I'm sure your passion is health and nutrition and fitness, right? It's actually so, a little bit different. I love health, but i really into the personal development. Like, I really love, I, I like every day I listen to Tony Robbins stuff and it's really, I love it, all the meta programs, how to shift your mind because I wanted to change myself, the mentality I had. So this is where I'm more focusing. That's great. So that's exactly it. So I found my passion and then what I did was I did more than everybody else around me to become noticed. And then once my mentors found me and I became, you know, I had a very strong conversation of how serious it is. I said, I'm willing to work for you for free and do whatever it takes around you because I knew if these guys are worth a hundred million to a billion, just being around them and doing their daily work with them will eventually rub off on me. So not a lot of people are willing to do that, but I knew that was one of the ways for me to get the information and the actual work ethic to get to where I needed to go. And then, of course, I had Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn was like a father figure to me. I traveled with Jim Rohn. I got the opportunity to just talk with him, be with him, uh, spend time with him. And so he did a lot of grooming in my mind as well, too. As you know, uh, Jim Rohn was Anthony Robbins' mentor. Mm -hmm. So Anthony Robbins actually worked for Jim Rohn when, uh, in the beginning for, for him in his phone room selling Jim Rohn's videos and audios and things like that. So, you know, I just had that really amazing time with Jim that allowed me to... Um, not just think big, but understand what you need to do on a daily basis in order to go through the wall, if you will, to hit success. And success is, is not hard. It's merely making a decision. It's these same words we hear over and over. Make a decision, be committed, and be consistent. But what happens is, is most people are here. It's very easy for people to make a declaration and say the words, 
but the action and the activity is what allows you to become successful because in the do, doing it is where you get the no. It, it's actually interesting because like uh, lately I uh, interview, you know who is uh, Alex Charfen? I have not heard of him, no. I'll, I'll look him up. So he said, uh, yes, you want to make a decision but you also want to have a perspective that you're getting there because most of us like okay we decide we set a goal uh, which is we, it can be like a small goal like i want to increase my income just about 20 percent this month okay but still if we don't have a perspective that we're getting there so we lose track right so for myself i can say like i always set higher goals because uh, I heard somebody said like you gotta have an unrealistic goals because the realistic thinking is what keeps most of society mediocre. So I said, okay, I will set high goals. I want to make 100 million dollars. I don't know. I, I set like really high goals, but I never made even like 10,000 dollars a month. So it's really we gotta use perspective and also know where we start and be real with ourselves, right? You bring up another topic, <clears throat> and after you, you know, the, what we just talked about was kind of the words that you need to apply in order to be successful, but you need to understand your numbers, and that's what I teach a lot with people, is you need to know, not only do you want to go there, but do you know the exact numbers that it's going to take for you to get there, because when you do your numbers, your business numbers, so for example, if you're in the direct sales industry, you know, I always taught my guys, you need to get 10 new customers a month and 10 new distributors. Well, how are you going to do that? So you got to figure out how many presentations you need per day to get one person signed up. So one person may need 10 presentations to get one signed up. One may need uh, three presentations to get one signed up, right? So once you know the numbers, then you can forecast when you're going to get them. And I think that's another main thing is there's a bell curve in business where in the beginning you you work like crazy. You work around the clock and you don't see anything, right? But what you're doing is you're creating momentum and you're improving your skill set. And in that time period, 90% of the people quit in any business, all for all business, they quit because they don't see a result. They just see themselves working a lot. Well, they don't realize that what momentum is, is carrying and about the 60th day is when all of a sudden they're going to start seeing a lot of business coming in. Now, for you, you know, have you ever been to an old farm and you see those farm pumps, you mm -hmm. know, where the water comes out? Yes. So what is a farm pump? Well, it's a well. And when, when you lift the handle up and down, there's no water coming out. You have to lift it up and down, up and down, up and down, and eventually... The pressure in the well is the, enough to lift the water out of the well, right? Mm -hmm. Like 90% of the people that lift that handle think there's no water. And so it's, you have to understand your numbers. You've got to be consistent. And that's why, you know, you're going to go through changes. You're, you're, you know, what I always say, if it's hard, that means your skill set is changing because you're, you're improving your capacity, you're improving your, your knowledge, you're improving everything about you. So hard is good, but you have to know your numbers in order to get there. I didn't get to the top by just hoping and praying, even though I did pray. Um, you have to know your numbers. So, and if you don't know that, then you don't know how to work on yourself. So it's, a, it's like you need to uh, know to anticipate better. Like if you anticipate and like, uh, like you said, uh, you do, you walk, you walk, you walk and after 60 days, if I know up front to anticipate that it's going to take a while, but how do we actually know if uh, what we are doing, it's, it's good that it's take like this time of frame because I can do something three months, six months and anticipate it's going to take six months. But then I see somebody else had done it like in two months or one month. So how do I know that uh, I have a good perspective? Well, it, it, again, it goes back to the numbers. So the guy that did it in two months did more numbers than you did over six months. Or uh, they have a different skill set. Right? And so, you know, in my teachings that I teach people in is that, like right now, I've got some people that have started their businesses, they're in merchant processing, they're calling people and doing all, but 
I said, the first week, I want you to call 100 businesses a day. I don't care what your results are. I don't care what your results are. just want you to get it in the habit of calling 100 businesses a day. Next week, we're going to work on fine-tuning your script so that we can get down your presentation, we can get down how you sound, and we can get all of that done. But I just want you to get 600 businesses called, and then we're going to go to the next step. That's where you get that consistency from, and that, and then they're doing that. That repetition is where you get uh, able to get your ownership of your process. And then if you just look at your numbers, you know, just like back in the '60s, the U.S. went to the went up to the moon. Well, we didn't just go to the moon. We had to log a whole bunch of information over 10 years, trial and error, trial, and then that information that we look we log allowed us to put a rocket and a spaceship up on the moon. So it's the same in your business. If you just look at your history, look at your numbers, you'll know if you're doing enough of it or not enough of it in order to increase or decrease how fast or slow you want to go. And if we look at today's world, we live in a digital era, right? And yep. most of the cold calls is through social media. You use Facebook, you use YouTube, SoundCloud, whatever it takes to put your name out there, right? So. Yep. How important it is, do you think, like using more of social media or uh, at the same time using more of the classic ones, which is uh, cold calls? Mm -hmm. I think both are very important. Uh, today's world is more of a sales funnel, where you drive traffic to a sales funnel and you let what's called a video sales letter do the work. And so you qualify people a little bit more. Um, by doing that, and qualifying people, you position yourself to have a faster build. Now, cold call is still great if you have a, um, you know, if you don't have a business that has a um, kind of a fine-tuned product, then I wouldn't cold call. You want to have, if you, I would go more into sales funnels and driving traffic from your email list, from your Facebook, Twitter, even like you just said, YouTube. Um, and I would just suggest that people get educated in it. There's a lot of really incredible courses you can take on how to drive traffic. Um, so that's what I'd recommend. Sales funnels are the way of the future. How important it is uh, for, for you, do you think, uh, to really be specific with who you're targeting? Because many, many people in business, I can say for myself, I was not that specific, like who am I targeting? So I like taking a shotgun and like ta 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 ta, -ta and like trying to eat, eat them all, right? Like from women, men. So in order to be specific, what is the categories in your perspective we need to uh, look at when we try to be really, really specific? Well, you always want to know who your avatar is. Avatar is who is your ideal customer. And if you know who that is, Facebook, for example, will allow you to target that specific group of people. And um, you can literally only put your advertisement in front of those type of people. And then you can increase your ad spend. The great thing about Facebook is you can spend $2, $5 a day in order to fine tune your traffic. Something else you can do, you can take an email list. Of maybe you have a whole bunch of emails that you've gotten and you can load that into Facebook and then they will put your advertisement in front of that type of person because it basically reads and profiles your customer base. And you are very, very, a lot of uh, years in, in the business and out there. When, if we look back, what is the biggest mistake you've made uh, in your career that if you could talk to your child or anybody that's starting a business, uh, really need to be careful at? Um, couple things. <clears throat> Don't lose momentum. Uh, in business, you create momentum, and then two, you need to what's called further momentum. So, for example, let's say you're making a hundred thousand dollars a month, and maybe you don't want to hire two more people to help you delegate to increase your business. So, by not delegating, you try to do it all yourself to keep the money, and really, what happens is is you start going backwards. So I've, I've done that a couple times. Um, luckily, I, you know, happy that I caught it. Um, and the next thing is, is, and I did this early on, but I made the mistake at the very beginning and I, I made sure that I didn't. 
You cannot live off of your profit. You need to reinvest your profit back into your advertising. Um, and so what I did was um, I basically, you know, had a part-time job and I paid my rent my car and I took everything out of my business and kept rolling it back in. Most people uh, think that their business is a job. I think, oh, I made $1,000, and they go buy groceries and go buy food, whatever. They got to go out and, and whatever. Well, what, what you're doing is, is that you're not allowing yourself to grow your business. You are a business. If, if you look at the big corporations out there, 30% of their gross revenue is put back into advertising. So you got to advertise. And so for me, I got to that. I lived, I lived under my means, and I took $1,000 and made it into 2000 I got all the way up to you know, several million dollars a month in advertising I spent, you know, to get where I was going. But I didn't spend a million, I didn't have a million when I first started, I had a couple dollars. But I just rolled it and rolled it and rolled it and rolled it to where it became a big amount of money. And um, I was, that, that was one of my things. So, it's a good question. But I think like many of us like know such a lot. We we all know it like intellectually that we need to change. We need to start a business. We need to do this. But until it's really in our guts that we need to change, we don't do anything. It's like uh, if we're doing like a cold call, for example. And most of the people, and I can tell for myself, like I ate re- the rejection. Right and it, like every time somebody telling me something and sometimes people can be really really tough with you right so what I usually all the time say to myself is like in order for me to feel rejected uh, I will have to believe that uh, every person in the world uh, needs to uh, have the same uh, model of the world as, as me because everybody is different right so if I look at it at, at this way it, it might help but I want to ask you, how, uh, how do you see it? How do you handle rejection? Well, you're going to get 70%, 70% minimum of business and life is rejection. And no's don't hurt you. Uh, they make you stronger. So you just, you know, one day I was in my Rolls Royce and I was driving down the street with one of my new uh, people. And he's like, oh my gosh, this car is so incredible. And I said, listen, here's what you have to understand. I've had thousands of no's. Thousands. I've been rejection. I've had everything. But if you just understand that you're going to get three out of ten people you talk to, and you get your mind wrapped around that, nobody can can interfere with where you're going. So no is, is not a personal strike against you. It doesn't make you a, a worse person. You just got to stand up and realize where you're going. And if you know where you're going, you said it a little bit a second ago, um, if, if, the, if, it's, if where you're going is strong enough, you will not worry about what other people think. If you're not really committed to where you're going and you just kind of want to go there as far as a goal or a dream, then you'll quit. Um, for me, I did not want to be broke the rest of my life. I hated it. I, it was the worst feeling in my life. I hated it. So. I, I did something about it. I, I got out of that situation. It was not easy, a lot of work, um, but I would have had to work 40, 50 years of my life anyways for hard work for little money. So I just was like, I'll just go after the money and then I can help people, you know? Do you think but uh, we all can change in a moment? Because uh, like you said, you've been broke and it, it was something that really got you nerve. Like, and many of us, uh, it can take like five or 10 years to make the decision to, okay, no more. But instead of like waiting for like five, 10 years, how we can actually make the change right now before it's uh, getting in even worse and worse and worse? Well, there's an, um, there's an old saying um, there's a, a grandfather and a, and a young grandson sitting on the front porch of a house. And he looks over, the grandson looks over, and here's a dog sitting on a nail. And the grandson looks at the grandfather and says, Grandpa, how come that dog is sitting on the nail? And the grandfather says, well, son, what, the nail doesn't hurt enough yet for the dog to move. And that's life. If you don't hurt enough yet to change your life, you won't do it. So once the nail hurts, then 
is goes all the way back to what we talked about at the beginning of this podcast, and that is um, you make the decision, you find out what passion you have, what business, you find out what the numbers are, and you go. And you can change every day, because you were talking about your passion with Anthony Robbins and those types of things. You can change your state in an instant, but you have to be willing to be aware of your state so you can change it. All humans can change. All humans. And I don't care. If people can argue that to the sun comes up and down, but every human can change. I've been into 90 countries around the world. Uh, I've seen every type of person. I don't, every religion, we're all the same. We all want love. We all want you know peace. We all want to basically have time freedom. Well, you can, you, so we all have the same desires. The difference is, is the nail hurt enough for you to do something about it? Mm-hmm. You're absolutely right. And I want to take you back uh, again. Uh, you said you worked uh, with Herbalife and I saw a video of you that uh, you went and started uh, Vema, if I say it correctly, right? So I want to take you back, like what's made the shift in your mind to, okay, I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to start something else. Well, for me, I was with Herbalife for a long time. And, um, you know, thank- thankfully I was part of the original uh, uh, group of people that started Herbalife. So I got to see the true passion of people, uh, the true passion of giving. Um, and it was magical time. Once the owner died in 2000, um, it was just different. It turned into Wall Street bought the company. Uh, the products were cheapened, um, and the people didn't see it. And I, I'm all about principle. You know, I, I would rather serve people instead of make the money. Because if you go after money first and people second, that doesn't work that way. So I just got to the point where um, the, the people at Herbalife were trying to change the uh, methodology. And, you know, rather than to fight with them, I made a decision for my own personal self to take my organization out of the company, and we left. And it was one of the best decisions of my life. Um, it allowed me to go to the next level. And now I'm the CEO of multiple companies, and, uh, you know, I really am thankful for what that company did for me and what it, how it grew me. Um, you know, I would have never been here today if it wasn't for Herbalife. But it just got to the point where, for me, I had to just go to that next level. Just when I started my Herbalife distributorship, I became the number one royalty earner in that company out of 90 countries around the world. And it was just time to go to the next, you know, the next thing in life. So, you know, I always say God bless all my ex-Herbalife friends and, and Herbalife distributors because I still love them all, but I had to go to the next level, you know? And what do you believe uh, was the really main shift in your life that really got you, like, changing all of your perspective about life because we all uh, born into a story we our uh, parents used to say to us we need to go uh, to college and have a, a degree at something and then work uh, for a corporation so how did you got uh, really shift in your mind like was it an audiobook you heard a, a book that you read no it was um, it, it was a major uh catastrophe that I witnessed and like I told you in the very beginning when I was interning for that pharmaceutical company um, one night now this this internship was 10 years and over 10 years they would make you a vice president of a certain region of the company it was in 85 countries this uh, pharmaceutical company now what so here I am I'm thinking hey I'm gonna have an amazing career pharmaceuticals vice president one night I was walking into the corporate office and the number two guy in the entire world, so right below the CEO, was, I heard crying coming out of his office. Like just, I mean, sounded like he was getting beat up. So I ran in there to see what was going on. I wanted to help him. And when I opened the door, uh, leader, it was like, he looks at his head was on his desk and he reached up and he had tears running down his face. Now, we were all scared of him because he was the number two guy in the world. He's wow. not even telling you you're at a job and that's hard. So he said, I said, are you okay? Are you okay? And he said, listen, I've been here for 35 years. I gave up my weekends, my holidays, everything to sacrifice for my family. And they're going to let me go before my retirement. I'm going to lose everything. So right there, 
was like time stopped. All the things and the beliefs that I had from growing up, you gotta go to university, you gotta get a good job, all of that was destroyed in an instant watching this man lose everything. And when he said, I can't even work two jobs to earn what I earned in this, I mean, just, it was, was mind blowing. So that, I went from like 19 years old to 40 years old in my head that night driving home. And that's what changed me. And so, you know, it goes back to when you want something bad enough, you just figure it out. And that was the one thing that I witnessed that made me realize that I got to go find a business that I'm passionate about and go all in and figure this out because I do not want to be him. What did you ask yourself back then when you saw this? I said, well, I can tell you what I said. I said, if it's got to be, it's up to me. Hmm. Interesting. If it's got to be, it's up to me. I just didn't know what to do, where to go because I didn't have any money. I didn't have any business experience. I just had a desire to win and um, I found it. You know, for me, it was Herbalife for many years. And then uh, now it's, I, I consult people around the world and teach them how to have a business. And now I do all kinds of things. I sit on boards, I talk to Fortune 500 people, I train people around the world. Whatever it takes to help as many people as possible is what I do. Did you, know, you, did you got like a reality check? Because like before you saw, you, you saw that like, okay, this is something that's gonna be permanent on my life. And then you see something like that happen and it's like snaps uh, all of uh, what you've been thinking and uh, teach your brain to think, right? That, it changed my reality. Yeah, it's just like with Mother Teresa, if you know the story, she, when she was about 50 years old and she was a regular woman and then she saw somebody that was dying and she tried to help him and uh, until he got to the hospital, he actually died in her arms. And from that point, she got uh, like uh, a decision that uh, she's gonna help people, and sh- as long as she live, she will not let anybody die like this. And this is what made Mother Teresa, the Mother Teresa we know. So, uh, all amazing story. Amazing story. Yes. That's, that's that is it. I mean, and everyone has something in them that makes them want to do it. it it's just. They maybe haven't found their found their cause. You know, the number one reason why people don't do things is fear. Fear is number one reason why people don't execute a business plan or change their life. It's fear. So if you can just understand that nothing can happen to you. Failure is not bad. It actually helps you become stronger and more educated. Then you, you just you gotta understand. You live once. You gotta go for it. And. Uh, you know, it, it, it'll work out for you. But again, you got to do your numbers. You got to be consistent, and you'll get there. It's like I can put myself like right now on the line because I know people that listening to this. I always uh, believe like uh, in order to become a better leader, I first need to lead myself and put myself out there. So for me, like I came about uh, a year ago, and. I believe like my mission is to really inspire and become so much more for the world and not just my country. So I have like a confusion, like from one time, like I'm Jewish and my religion, I'm really, really, I love my country. I love uh, Jewish people and Israelis and I believe it's my calling to actually inspire them and become more and use all of the materials that uh, I learned through the years from Tony Robbins to actually make uh, an impact. But in other uh, ways, like if I'm going back, I, I limit the impact that I can get because Jewish is just one culture of many and I want to make big impact on the world. So it's like really, for me, it's not really specific. Like we talked about being specific because I'm trying to target Israel and at the same time, I'm trying to get to the big uh, wall. So it's... That's awesome. That's, that's exciting. So... Are you good? So you just you made a see you made a decision. That's what you wanted to do, and so now that's what you're focusing on, and that's you're going to help a lot of people around the world by having that mission. The thing is that I'm still doing in Hebrew. <laughs> it's like I, I'm a year here, and I I made more than 500 videos for Israel uh, all this year because it's like my heart is still connected to them, but I still want to get the bigger impact for the world. So it's. I, I think to myself, maybe I can do both, but... <laughs> you can, you can, and I'll be happy to, to 
cheer you on and anything you need from all, any of us will be right next to you helping you and you know we'll get that done for you that's not a problem because uh, they're saying like uh, when you're trying to catch two rabbits at the same time you catch none right <laughs> so it's also true because if you're like this and this then eventually you get nothing so right. it's it's just making a decision we all need to decide because uh, any person that I ask, like, what do you really want? Most of them don't know what they want. And our brain is like a computer. The more specific we are, and if we actually know what we want, being really specific, like you, for example, think about something you really lo- wanted in your life. What made you get that? Because you've been so specific, right? So that's it. And I believe that's what makes people uh, make it happen and not just being uh, generalized. That's right. Absolutely correct. And you know, I really recommend anyone out here watching this, get some of Jim Rohn's books. Because what makes Jim Rohn so powerful, um, unlike a lot of other people who do personal development, Jim Rohn's stories are about starting at the bottom and working to the top. And in that working, he explains your mindset, how you feel, and you go, oh gosh, that's exactly how I, what I'm going through right now. Because he's writing about the same journey you're on. And then he lost all of his, his millions of dollars, he talks about it, and then he got it back. See, that's what entrepreneurs need, is you need to be able to understand that journey. Because everyone's so after the victory. The victory is great, but the journey is what defines you. And most people want to just get to the victory. The victory is not, is not the answer, the, the, the journey is. So get some of Jim Rohn's books, you'll love them. I'm sure you probably have read some of them already. I mean, there's so many nice, they're easy reads, you know, the five, uh, five pieces of life's puzzle. I had this audio book, uh, I think it's called Ambition, like about six hours, something like that. I used to like when I uh, when I was uh, still living with my parents. Like each Friday, Friday night we do a celebration for the Friday. So I was always uh, the dishwasher. So I was uh, doing the dishwasher and like uh, watching Jim Rohn or Tony Robbins. So it's like constantly always feeding. I believe your mindset, and this is like how you start to to make the ball rolling, right? Okay, so the last question I want to ask you is uh, what would be your legacy that you would like to live long after you want to be here? Well, that's a great question. <clears throat> My, what I want to leave is I really want to teach people you know, how to control their mindset, how to build a business second to none, but more importantly, I want to teach people how to have true freedom. I want, I want th- this, this world needs freedom. And it doesn't matter what side you lie on or what your beliefs are. We all want the same thing. So I want to leave a legacy to people, uh, a true roadmap on whatever they do in life, how they can actually achieve it and, and have the real answers, not the surface answers. So that's what I want to give. Just giving someone some money is not going to give. It's a temporary fix. But if we can, I can leave a legacy on exactly how to establish and gain the success that they're looking for, not just surface information, not just little, but the real deal, then that legacy will continue forever. And that's what I'm, that's my goal. That's what I'm doing right now is making sure that legacy is laid down. And, and uh, so hopefully I'll be remembered for that. And, and giving as much as I possibly can give back while I'm still here. That's amazing. Like we all, at the end of the day, I believe every person that I interview and uh, I ask this question, it all comes down to the the most important need, which is contribution. Because we all do, nobody will actually remember like uh, Anthony or Lidor for uh, how many millions they did or like the Lamborghinis they had. It's all about the impact. What did I do? What what did I do that actually uh, make an impact on somebody else's life? So uh, I believe that's what we're all here for. And once we realize this, uh, that life is always uh, for us and uh, we are here to give, contribute. We all have something deep that uh, once it's unleashed, then it really can be amazing. So where can we find you? Uh, you can go to 
ANTN, that's A-N-T-H-O-N-Y, P-O-W-E-L-L, that's my website. Uh, you can go to Facebook. Um, I have two on the fan page, Anthony V. Powell, and then just Anthony V. Anthony Powell is my private page. You know, I have a full media, um, social media group that you message me, I respond back and forth. So, um, you know, I'm here to serve. There's an old saying I'll leave you with. Jim Rohn said this to many of us uh, over and over. He said, it's better to be in love and live in a tent than to live in a mansion by yourself. Mm. And so, you know, it's important, as, we, as we've talked about here on this podcast, you know, giving's one thing, but teaching people how to become a giver is that old saying, I'd rather teach you how to fish so you can eat forever than to give you a fish, right? Yeah. So I want you to be able to live forever. That's what's so important. I'm giving people that type of information. So I want to thank you for having me here today. It's an honor. And, uh, thank you, to- Anthony. I really, really appreciate your time uh, to come to my podcast and share with us all of your amazing knowledge. So thanks again. My pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your week. If you enjoyed this interview or any other one, from the Mind Body Podcast, feel free to subscribe to my podcast at iTunes, SoundCloud, and at my YouTube channel. Also, feel free to share or leave a message at the comments below because your opinion is really important to me. Just like I always say, leaders create leaders, and we all here to grow together. For more information about fat loss, gaining muscle, and taking your mind to a whole new level, check my site at www.lidodayan.com. Till then, never, ever forget to smile. See you soon.